Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome members from both ends, officers, public present here, and those watching at home. May I ask that put telephone be put on silent mode? May I remind members that they cannot tweet, but the public can. May I ask if all have the following agenda documents, the main agenda, and the supplementary agenda. Everyone have them? Okay. May I, all rem may I remind all members that all debates should be done through the mayor and without interruptions, and of course, respectfully. And may I also remind you that points of order can only be about breaches of constitution or law. Also, please do not turn on your microphone until I have asked you to speak to avoid this moving the web casting cameras too soon. Members will be aware that the London mayor and assembly elections are taking place on 2nd May as well as council by election for the vacancy in Brentford West Ward. We are therefore all bound, the, all bound by the requirement of the pre-election rules during tonight's meeting. To clarify, what it is perfectly legitimate to have a political discussion on items on tonight's agenda, I would ask members to avoid acting in ways that may appear to be electioneering. In practice, this means that whilst member can make political contribution on any debate, I do not want to hear any members using their contribution to exhort people to vote for one party or another. If this should happen, I will have no alternative but to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. We will now move on to the first item of the agenda. Agenda item one, apologies for absence and declaration of interest. Apologies received from the following councillors, Samia Chaudhary, Tony Luki, Hena Meer, Shivraj Garewal, and Harleen Atwal here. Apologies for lateness have been received from Councillor Peter Thompson. Do we have any other apologies? Yes, Tom. Uh, apologies for lateness from Karen Smith. Any more? Okay, thank you. May I draw members' attention to the document on declaring interest? May I ask? If there are any declaration of interest from members, none. Thank you. Agenda item two, announcements. We start today with some very sad announcement. Members will all be aware of the very sad news of the death of former councillor and leader of the council, Honorary Alderman Steve Curran, MBE on Monday of last week. Steve Curran was a man who was known to everyone in this chamber, in this council as an organization, and very widely across the whole of the borough. As the outspring of sympathy and expressions of sadness from across the political spectrum and from organizations and people from every corner of Honslow testify, he has left an indelible mark on this council and the entire borough, and most people would rightly think that he has left a remarkable legacy that very few people manage in their political careers. That career can be easily described 
Steve Curran was first elected to the council as a, lead, as a Labour member of the Sion Ward in 2010, and he remained a councillor representing that ward until he retired in 2022 due to ill health. In the 14 years he was an elected member, he was always in the forefront of council politics. He was chair of the overview and security committee in his very first year in office and then became a cabinet member in 2011. And he remained a cabinet member for the remaining 30 years, 13 years of his time with the council. He held the portfolio of education, housing, human resources, planning and regeneration before becoming leader of the council in 2014 a role he retained for eight, eight years. He sat on an array of councils committees, but a few of more notable ones include his being a chair of the Sustainable Development Enforcement Subcommittee, chair of the Health and Wellbeing Committee, and vice chair of Sustainable Development Committee, now the Planning Committee. In addition, he represented the council on Brentford Dock, the Town Twinning Association of Hounslow, London Council's Housing Forum, and the LGA General Assembly. It was under his leadership that Hounslow was awarded the title of Council of the Year in the Local Government Chronicle Awards in 2021, and he was subse subsequently awarded the MBE in 2023 New Year's Honours List for services to local government and to the community in Hounslow. And members will recall that we conferred the title of Honorary Alderman on Steve only a few weeks ago at a special meeting of the Council for his eminent public service. Sadly, he was too ill to attend in person, but we were delighted that his son Samuel was able to, to be there in his place. And I know that Steve was watching the meeting on, live, on the live stream as he was critiquing the speeches made there. That was Steve all over. And it was at, at least good for us all to know that despite his worsening health condition, Steve's personality and characteristic approach to life never deserted him. All those who had contact with him in the last few weeks and months have reported a joke or a strongly expressed view laced with the occasional strong language. That was Steve. Steve Garam was not just a fellow counselor, but he was, for many of us, also a friend. And I know that many members from both sides of the chamber will want to say a few words in tribute to him. I therefore now invite people to speak. May I ask Councillor Rajawat to speak? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's, it's an honor to go first to talk about Honorary Alderman Steve Curran, MBE. And in his memory and at his request today, we wear green as his favorite color. I don't know why it wasn't red, but we'll forgive him for that uh, in this. Um, in my remarks, I'm gonna keep them brief because I've had perhaps two bites of this apple. I've, I was had the honor of talking about him at cabinet as well. And I know that there are others that want to speak uh, about Steve. I had the pleasure and honor of representing Hounslow uh, a few weeks ago at a in, inward investment conference and many there, in fact, almost everyone knew Steve either by name or by <coughs> reputation. And the three things that really stand out about Steve in terms of what did he deliver for this borough, um, his COVID, the, the response during COVID, uh, where he was at the front line leading the charge uh, making sure things were happening, making sure that the most vulnerable uh, in our society were really protected, uh, working day and night. And he often used to tell me the COVID response and the COVID times were what kept him up at night with worry for the residents. So that's something that we will always remember him for. Building housing, the number of houses that we built for vulnerable adults. And, you know, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'll never forget Steve saying to me, it's not about the bricks and mortar. It's about what it means for those residents who have suffered or are really looking for a better chance in life. Uh, and handing over those keys was so, so important to him. And then the community stadium in Brentford as well and everything that that meant, not only for Brentford, uh, getting into the premiership, but also um, in terms of the borough 
and the significance it had for us in the borough as a pre having a Premier League team, but also the community outreach work that they do and carry on doing. And uh, indeed, they were with me at that conference and they also paid tribute to, um, to Steve as well. But I think for me, uh, and others will talk uh, about various memories, uh, I know, but for, for me, what is the real lesson of Steve Curran is despite the cut and thrust of the political world that we now live in, Steve knew and passionately believed that we here in local government have real power and real power to change lives for the better and that it was our sole mission to work day and night for as long as we could to deliver that. Uh, and I know had illness not um, taken Steve, he would still be here leading that charge and working really, really hard. And I suppose that's what it is. Hounds, uh, Steve absolutely believed in Hounslow, but he also believed in the promise of Hounslow, the promise that our young people could achieve great things if we facilitated it, if the most vulnerable in our societies could have better opportunities if we put our efforts behind it. And I suppose in his passing, we absolutely mourn him, and I don't think I've quite got over it considering we were elected at the same time. But that is the mission that I hold dear to my heart, and I know we all hold dear to our hearts, making our communities' lives better. His legacy will live on in everything that we see out there in the way the borough has changed for the better. But there is still more work to do, and I know that Steve, watching this from up above, and his family watching us, will want us to commit to making sure that we never forget that mission. And on that, we absolutely will miss Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Rajivat. May I now ask Councillor Dunn to say a few words? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I don't, feel, <laughs> don't feel prepared for this. Um, three weeks ago today, uh, I stood here, I stood others, and, um, and spoke about Steve. Um, and it was, although it was, it was a happier occasion, as we were conferring the status of honorary alderman upon him and others, it was obviously... Uh, for all of us tinged by the sadness that Steve was too ill to attend in person. Um, but he was there with us, he was watching. Um, he was watching the live broadcast and, <laughs> and he gave feedback afterwards. <laughs> um, and this time he's, he's not here and he's not watching. Um, so I spoke then about the vision that Steve had for the borough and I spoke about the support that he gave to me individually as a councillor and I know that he gave that support to many other people in this room and others who who have moved on to do other things as well um, so I'm not going to to go over that again and and councillor Roger White and the mayor have covered it um, anyway um, so I'll just talk about the fact that since, since Steve has passed away, it's, it's many, many people have expressed their support for Steve. Um, to me, um, online, uh, personally, th through many means, they've talked to me about many different aspects of Steve. Some of them um, going back to his days playing rugby um, some of them, his early days uh, as a councillor uh, and, um, and in being involved in his residence association. Um, some people have talked about his, his setting up of Hounslow Community Food Box um, as a charity for the borough. And, um, and, and Steve's family have asked um, that people give donations in, in Steve's name to uh, the food box. Um, rather than, than flowers. Um, um, <clears throat> and many, many people have talked to me about Steve's leadership. And there are some points that have been often repeated because, of course, the, the, the things he did so well at. Um, his championing of the borough, his bringing in development, his building of, 
of homes um, and that vision for the borough, um, his leadership during the COVID pandemic. But there are also other areas where he showed leadership. Uh, and many, many uh, of my friends who, uh, who cycle have, have told me how proud they are of Steve's leadership um, in bringing forward Cycleway 9 um, and, and standing firm on, on active travel. And I think it would tickle Steve to know that he was seen this way and, and as, you know, as a champion for cycling. He did, he did have a Brompton. I don't know how often <laughs> it came out of the back of his Land Rover. <coughs> <laughs> but, he, but more recently, uh, Steve did buy himself a, an e-bike and he was planning to use that to explore the countryside in West Sussex where, where he moved after retiring from the council. Sadly, he never got that chance. And when I was able to visit him a few weeks ago, he told me that he, he was sad that he didn't get the chance to, to ride that bike. Um, towards the end of his life, he, he stay, was living with his, his brother um, and, and other members of his family were there around him um, in Sydenham. And I, as I've said, I was fortunate enough to be able to, to visit him. Um, I went with Lily and uh, we got a little bit lost on the way. Not, not too badly, but we, we, we bumped into some Labour canvassers <laughs> on the local high street. And they were uh, campaigning against some building development in the town. So uh, you can imagine what Steve thought of that when we told him. <laughs> Anyway, um, thank you, Steve, for your friendship and your leadership. You were taken away from us too soon, but your family can be proud of your legacy, and so can Hounslow. Thank you, Councillor Dunn. May I now ask Councillor McGregor to pay tribute to Steve? <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a, a very somber but poignant moment in the Council's history. Uh, the somberness is because we've lost someone whom I would describe as a, a good man. History will be very kind to Steve for his endeavours, hard work, and what you might call sheer grinding gumption to get things done. Now, I'd like you to cast your mind back three years before the last election. And Steve and I were sharing things because I was then the leader of the opposition, he was the leader of the council, and there were various things we needed to look at together when it came to council activity. I had previously had the pleasure of uh, asking Mr. Purvis to join us as a, an employee, and he comes from Yorkshire. And Yorkshire has a history of aldermanic appointments. So having discussed it with Mr. Purvis, I discussed it with Steve. And we discussed names, and we discussed people who would be leaving the council at the next election and thinking of an appropriate way to honor them. The poignancy, of course, is I didn't understand at that moment. It would include my dear friend, Steve. And Steve was a friend. Some of you will remember the torment he went through when his house and front garden was trashed by local people in Brentford who just dumped wheelie bins in it. Well, he and I were going out to dinner together that night. And when I turned up, there was Steve with the police. And I just took Steve away as fast as possible because he was not in a good place. It was interesting to see another side of him there. He was very angry about what had happened and wanted protection. And I said to him, look, the best protection is to get away from here. So we went off and had a very nice dinner together with a group of other people who'd invited us. I remember that distinctly, because by the end of the evening, he'd calmed down and was quite measured. And in the car journey back, uh, when I'm out on business me meetings in the evening, I don't drink. So in the car coming back, I drove him back. He had uh, tanked himself up quite nicely and was now <laughs> quite merry. But Steve was also a very, very careful guy. He was quite measured in many ways. 
And his interests, his interests were quite wide. And when I had coffee with him, and when I had the chance to, uh, to, to talk to him personally, you know, he was quite easy to talk to. And look at his business record. I mean, helping to run the great Ormond Street Hospital is something really extraordinary. And his managerial and leadership skills were no doubt honed by the work he did there. So I will miss him, and I hope all of us here will also miss him. But history will be kind. At the end of the day, he had grit. And he was one of the good guys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. May I now invite Councillor Bath to say a few words? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, obviously, like all of us here, I, I was devastated to hear about the passing of Steve Curran, even though I'd seen him a couple of weeks beforehand with Catherine, and he was still laughing and joking then, wasn't he? Um, laughing and joking till the end, I think. Um, I met Steve Curran back in 2007, before he became a councillor, and I remember him being quite a fiery and passionate individual. He swore a lot, and um, a very strong trade unionist, so it was only right that um, he became a councillor in 2010. And um, although he had many positions across the council when he first became a councillor, I didn't really get to know him until many years later when he was actually leader of the council from 2014 to 22. And it wasn't until I was his deputy leader from 2018 to 22 that I really got to know him. And although I was a little bit nervous about being his deputy because he's a very strong personality, it was an absolute honour and privilege to be working with him. He was ever so kind and supportive. And um, he was so dedicated to the borough, and you could absolutely see it in, in everything that he, do, he did. Um, his mission was always really quite simple. It was just to make Hounslow a better place to live in and to put Hounslow on the map. And I think you'll all agree that he absolutely did that. Um, much has been said tonight about his achievements, which were, of course, many. He brought investment into the borough uh, like nobody else. He worked tirelessly to bring about regeneration um, of his hometown, Brentford, uh, the Hounslow High Street quarter, and, of course, Bred Brentford Football Club, which he was a dear friend to. Um, he, we all know about his, his, his compassion and his passion about... Um, uh, housing, particularly building homes for local residents. And during his um, leadership, he oversaw the building of over 1,300 council homes for local residents. And he was always really proud when somebody from the housing list managed to get a home in the borough. And on a couple of occasions, I went with him when keys were handed over to people who'd been waiting for a very long time to be rehoused. And that was a really emotional and proud moment for him. And you could really see that. But obviously, one of the biggest challenges that he had uh, during the last four years of his leadership was, was COVID. And um, he, his leadership during that time was truly outstanding because nobody really knew what was going to happen in COVID. We didn't know whether we were going to live or die at one point. So it was really a frightening, frightening time. But he worked incredibly tirelessly. And um, he, he, he worried about whether businesses were going to do OK, <coughs> to whether people in the community were safe and whether they were getting food, etc. So being recognised as Councillor of the Year in 2021 was a real testament to his ambition and, and, his, uh, and his outstanding leadership. And I'm really pleased that he was further recognised when he was awarded um, an MBE. On a personal level, I found him extremely supportive. Meetings with him were always great fun. He had a, love, a great sense of humour, and he always found a way of making you laugh, even when we were talking about most serious issues. <laughs> um, and, um, of course, um, he had a lot of... I don't think I've ever met anybody with so many puns. So <laughs> definitely could win a pun off, if there's such a thing. But anyway, yeah, he was definitely a man of a lot of puns. Um, so, so just to say briefly, um, I don't think I've ever met anybody... Um, who has left? Who will leave such a la lasting legacy in, in the borough as Steve did? You only you only need to look around, and you will see um, his achievements everywhere. Um, and he was not afraid to make 
difficult decisions if he thought they were the right ones for the borough. And I think that's a really brave thing to do. And um, he, 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 he didn't hesitate. He left a lasting impression on many people. He was friendly and personable. Um, for me, it was an absolute honour to have known and worked closely with him. I will absolutely miss him. I'll, I'll definitely miss his swearing. That, that, that goes without doubt. But um, there will be many residents in this borough who will never have met him, but will benefit from his lasting legacy, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bath. May I now invite Councillor Bruce to express his views? I think uh, a little bit like Catherine, it seems rather surreal that we were here only a couple of weeks ago um, and I was seconding um, him as an alderman here and now we're here celebrating his passing and um, sharing our, our memories of him and, and the type of person and certainly the type of politician and leader of the council he was. Trying to think about all the things that he did and trying to distill them down into just a few uh, words. There were many different words that have been used by others this evening, but three that always with me and have come to mind and I think have been used by others already this evening, and that's compassion and generosity and kindness. Um, he touched so many people in so many different ways, often without most of us really realizing it. So many people have come and spoken to me about him, that I had no idea that knew him, knew him from rugby, knew him from his previous work in the NHS, and a lot who knew him through the council, knew him as leader of the council, knew who, uh, who dealt with him and who he helped without making a song and dance about it. He just did it, he got on with it, that was what he was here for, to make sure people um, were living the best possible life that they, they could. Last time I spoke to him, was on the phone only a few weeks ago, about a week before uh, the Alderman presentation. Um, and it was very matter of fact with him, very business, wanted to know what was going on in Hounslow, wanted to know what the gossip was. I'm sure he was asking everyone else about that as well, seeing if everyone agreed on what the gossip was. <laughs> um, but his generosity with his time, um, I rang him to check on how he was, but he wanted to check on how I was doing. Was I looking after his old portfolio, I think, was basically <laughs> the main thing. Was I building those houses and those homes for people? But I was able to ask him lots of things and talk to him about things that I knew we'd spoken about in the past. And, and his generosity with that time was, was absolutely fantastic. And lastly, it, it does, I think, maybe seem strange to some people to talk about his kindness because he could be... Uh, very combative, he was. Um, certainly wasn't afraid of a stand-up row uh, with, with anyone, really, about things he passionately <laughs> believed in. But he was extremely kind, and he was extremely thoughtful about individuals and about our Labour group and about the council and the opposition. Um, maybe not always, but he certainly was. It, it mattered to him that the council and councillors um, had the things that they needed in order to do their job properly. And his kindness was exemplified very much with what Lily was talking about earlier. When I was lead member for Children's Services, going to visit some care leavers moving in to their own home, council home that we have built for them and for people in this borough. And the pride in his face, it wasn't uh, paying lip service to it. It wasn't a quick handshake. Thank you very much for, you know, here's a photo and see you later. He wanted to spend time with them. He wanted to check they were okay. He'd have a go at the officers if they didn't have certain things that were sorted. And he would get on it and then be probing me and saying, have you sorted that out for them? Have you checked with officer so-and-so that this has happened for those people? It mattered to him. It mattered that the council was well run, that his colleagues were looked after. It mattered most of all that the borough was the best borough it could be, exemplified by us winning Council of the Year in, in 2021. But it wasn't about that. It was just about the day-to-day -day and, and dealing with people and making sure people were living, living the best lives they could. He will be extremely missed, I know by us all, by me personally, 
and by this borough and the things he leaves behind, it, it is on us all now to continue that legacy and make sure it continues well into the future. Thank you, Steve.